Welcome back guys. So finally getting a little bit of my voice back so I can do this video that I've been telling you about. I'm, I'm actually pretty pumped about this one. It's a cooler stand. Cooler stands are hot right now, but what I'm not seeing out there is double cooler stands. So that's why I decided to make this one. Super handy for cookouts, parties, birthdays, whatever. And the cool thing about these is there's a million different add-ons that you can do. Just like the casters that I put onto this, uh, this little towel rack. You know, you have your bottle openers. This one I decided to put a little tray in there in case you want to drop a lime or something down inside of your tasty beverage. I'm going to show you how to make it out of the complete wood like this as well as the original design which was all metal trim. Which one do you like better? I really cannot decide myself. I think that both of them turned out really cool. Um, I have not seen these in the galvanized. So that's what gave me the idea for that. Then I realized that there may be some people out there that do not like working with metal. I decided to go ahead and trim it out in wood on one side just to show you what it would look like as metal and also as wood and i'm going to teach you how to do both ways in this video so if you like these kind of builds make sure to smash that subscribe button follow for more i have tons of this stuff our little community is not so small anymore it's growing like crazy and that is awesome so our patreon is taking off the brag board i get messages every single day i'm proud of you guys so make sure to head over check those things out let's dive into this video because i have a ton of different things to cover What's up guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make both styles of these cooler stands. As always, I will be putting a cut list into the description, or if you would like plans in your hand, you can head over to my Etsy shop and I will have those available there as well. And that's all that I'm doing here is taking some standard 2x4s and making some of our frame stock. And we're going to start by putting together our large frames. So this build is going to consist of two large frames and two small ones. The small ones would go on the side. And I will be using pocket joinery for this build. So we'll be using two and a half inch pocket hole screws. And I'm going to be making pocket holes in parts labeled C and B. Now I'm going to show you a tool here that I haven't used much in many videos. But this is Craig's Foreman. Really handy for a lot of pocket holes. I'm going to be putting two pocket holes on the ends of each piece and if you'll notice that I'm actually putting them on connecting edges. The reason for this is they will be easier to conceal as we go along with the build. So for our long frames we're going to start by connecting part B to part A. We're going to drop down 10 and a half inches and then put in another part B. And then our final part B will be installed at the very bottom. And I'm using glue and these blue coat screws just because I have them around. But they're not necessary because, yes, this is going to be an exterior build, but there's going to be plenty of airflow going around this. And now at the center point of this frame, we're going to install part C. And we've already drilled the pocket holes for this. And now we're going to flip this over, leaving the pocket holes in the back, and install our strips F and E. These strips are just flush with the front. And basically they're either going to be for decor or trimming or they will actually be used to hold in the galvanized metal whichever you choose now with the front facing up we're just going to give it a little sand smooth everything out and i'm actually going to conceal a couple of pocket holes and there's only a few that you can actually see but i'm going to be putting these plugs in and it always helps if you put them in correctly I just put this one in with the sharp point going in. That does nothing. We'll give it a little sand where we just installed our plugs and then we'll repeat all of this to make our second long base plate. And now we'll assemble our two smaller ones. And basically it's going to be assembled the same way, same spacing, same pocket holes. We're just going to be attaching our parts labeled D and there will be three of them to our parts labeled A, the two sideboards. And just like on the long ones, there's a 10 and a half inch spacing between the two top boards. And now we'll just glue and nail in our parts labeled F and G. Now if you'll notice, I'm putting these on the front. So most of the pocket holes will be concealed in the back. And just like the first two that we built, we'll hit it with the sander and let's kind of dry fit these together and see how everything matches up. And there we have the bones of this whole project looking good from here now if you're going to stain or paint this frame now is the time to do it 
And I chose a little darker of a stain. I think it's called provisional or provincial. I have no clue, but something like this. It starts with a P and it's a memwax. So now it's time to cut our metal. And originally this whole thing was going to be made out of galvanized. I really had no intention of putting the wood sides on, but I later changed my mind. So if you're going with the galvanized, you'll need two pieces that are 10 and a half by 69 and two pieces that are 10 and a half by 16 inches. You can get all of these parts out of one sheet and it's like 20 bucks. So I'm going to start by installing the small sections. And this is where those rails come in that we installed. So with the face down, I push the metal in until it's hit the front rails. And that's all that I'm doing to attach this metal is using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Just put it in an angle. You just need enough pressure just to hold this in place. Plus if it ever gets dented, you can just simply take the screws out, put in a new piece. I'll show you how to install the wooden slats in a moment, but for now, let's go ahead and put this thing together. With the short frames on the inside, I'm going to measure out where I'd like my screw placement, and I'm going to put three two and a half inch screws in the end of each one. And I'm just using that stick as a jig for the rest of my screw placement because we will be doing this three more times. So after pre-drilling my holes, I decided that I wanted to countersink these and actually cover them with pegs. Why? I have no clue, but that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just using that half inch spade bit just to create my countersink and will also fit my peg. And as you can tell, my hammers have not shown back up, so that's why I'm still using this one that Noah used on the arc. And then I'll just give this peg a little trim and trim and we'll continue this for the other three sides. And do not think that you have to install pegs. You do not. It's actually kind of overkill but it will make for a little more of a clean look. And then the next step, we're gonna be using our cedar fence pickets. Just an FYI, the only ones that I could find were closer to one half of an inch than they were five eighths. So I sanded these down to a half of an inch. And these boards will be part I. They're gonna make up the bottom shelf of this cooler stand. And now we're gonna put pocket holes in the ends of every part I. And since some of these thicknesses are a little different, I actually like to use the 720 for this. Yes, it would be a lot easier to run these boards just straight across the base, but I want these inset. So to help with this, with the stand upside down, I'm actually using a scrap piece of plywood going all the way across my rails to ensure that when I flip this over, all of my boards are flush with the top rails. And yes, it would be much easier just to install these from the top, make the boards a little bit longer, but it would not look as nice. It'd look like everything else that's on the market. And speaking of that, check out some of these prices for these that I've found. And these pickets were all five and a half inch fence pickets, but in reality, we know that they're not all five and a half. They can be up to a quarter of an inch off. So the very last board will have to be custom cut. Now doesn't that look nice? It beats the heck out of these boards sitting on top of the runners. Perfect. And here's a little tip. The coolers that we're going to be using later make a nice stand. And if you're choosing to put casters on this, now's the time to do it. Speaking of coolers, let's go ahead and get those prepped. I'll put the link to these exact coolers in the description. These are just cheap Walmart coolers. So we're going to start by cutting the prongs that are holding on the lid. I'm using an oscillating tool for this, but you can use any type of a saw. And then we'll do the same thing for the handles. You can either pop those out, or if one's been stubborn, you can take your little saw and cut those out as well. And now we can install our drain. Any pipe that you see in this video will be one half of an inch black pipe. The coolers that I chose to use do not have a drain built into them, so I'm going to make one. So in the center of my cooler, about one inch from the bottom, I'm gonna drill a 7 8 of an inch hole. That is the OD, the outer diameter of this black pipe. And as you can see, this black pipe threads right in. That's exactly what we want. But I am gonna add some silicone just in case. And using my caulking gun that also looks like it came over on the arc, I'm gonna show you a little tip. The little hole that's in the handle of your caulking gun that's actually for cutting the tip off of your tube and usually you'll have a spike at the bottom 
and that's for breaking the seal of the tube. Hidden tricks, gotta love them. What you do not have to love, and I did not like at all, is that the clear caulking that I purchased, clear, plain as day, was white. Yep, first time that I've ever seen this, I have no clue, plainly labeled clear, comes out white. Brand new, no clue. It looks horrible, but it's all gonna be hidden anyway. So now let's install our four supports labeled J. And the purpose of these supports are to actually hold the weight of the cooler. I designed this that way the cooler can be removable. So the easiest way to install these supports is to put the closest one to the walls in about an inch away. Then set your cooler in and then measure the distance that you're gonna need so that it supports the handles. And I went ahead and removed two of the side panels just so you can see how everything is going. But this is where we're at. Now let's start working on our top. And we're going to cut parts K and L. And these are going to be at 45 degrees. And then with part L sitting at 45 degrees, go ahead and put in a couple of pocket holes into each side. And now using one inch pocket hole screws, let's go ahead and attach all of this. This will actually be a frame that sits around the cooler. Again, something that's not necessary, but it will set it off. Now with our cooler frames made, let's go ahead and mark the handles so we can cut those out. This will allow the weight of the cooler to rest on our supports and the cooler itself to be inset enough for the lid to close properly. And this is where we're at at this point. We just need a couple of parts labeled M to complete the top. I'll put some sizes down for part M, but again, I would go ahead and custom fit these pieces. And I'm not gonna fasten my top just yet because I will be needing to get into the inside just here in a bit, you'll see. So let's go ahead and install our spigots onto our ends or our drains. And to do this, I'm gonna find the center of my bottom board on the frame and then I'm gonna drill another 7 8 hole, and this will fit the three inch nipple that I'm going to be installing. Once the hole is drilled, I'll take my three inch black pipe and attach it to my spigot with some thread tape. Screw it into place, and our drain is all set. Now this is why I did not attach the top yet. I'm gonna be showing you what we would do if we wanted to use the wooden sides. These are parts labeled H, and I'm going to be putting two pocket holes in the ends of each board. And basically where our metal would go, these will fit perfectly. And again, the last board that you install, I would custom fit that one as well. And this is what it would look like with all wood. I kind of like it. But I also like the all metal too. Just something about the galvanized look just clean whichever one you decide it's going to look good either way now let's go ahead and attach our cooler drain to the drains that we installed earlier and i'm just going to use a half inch female by half inch female water line connector these water line supplies actually have their own built-in gaskets so you do not have to use thread tape for these so once we have everything back into place we put our top back on and we're ready to screw it all down. Now we just need to make our lids for these. We're getting closer. So for the wooden lids, you'll need parts O and N. We're gonna put these on 45 degrees. You could use a butt joint for this, but again, it's just adding more to it. The more detail that you can add, it will set your item apart from anyone else's. So for now, we're just using some wood glue and nails. Whenever we put the top on this, it will tie everything together. Now the top inserts are gonna be three boards labeled P. We are actually going to custom fit the center board. So with the top inset, I'm just gluing all around the edges and then I'll be adding some more finished nails. And to help to ensure that this lid stays in place, I'm adding half inch spacers all the way around. 
and to attach our cooler lid to our decorative lid, I'm going to measure one and a half inches up by four inches in and then install a two and a half inch screw. I'll be putting two screws in each end. These lids are ready for hinges, but first let's go ahead and decorate this thing up a little bit. Really from this point, everything else is optional, just to kind of dress it up. On the wooden side, I decided that I wanted to break up so much wood by adding a couple of decorative pieces. I also decided to make a black pipe towel bar, just to kind of match everything else. I'll throw all of the parts into the description. If you decide to add a towel bar, just make sure that everything is level and then mark your spot because you will need to reinforce the back. So I'm just adding drill holes through my spots that I've marked. That way I know exactly where to reinforce. And then I'm going to start a screw and then place my reinforcement into the back with some glue. The screw will grab a hold of this board and pull it tight against my outer panels. Now let's just add some hinges and some handles and we're done. Actually the handles probably should have been added before we added the lid, but you know, hindsight's 2020. Now for the hinges, I'm just using three inch hinges and just pick out some hinges that match what you've done the most. And then I'm going to install these at three inches away from the edge. And then there's a couple of other things that you can do to really set this off, like putting in some bottle openers. These are dirt cheap on Amazon. I'll throw some links in the description. And you can also put in a steam tray. It's just a little tray that may hold some like limes, lemons, things like that, but would really set this off and make it different. And there we have it. We're done. This thing is awesome. Regardless of whether you went with wood or you go with the metal, anyone would love to have this on their back porch, closer to the grill, for a party. And if you want it kind of plain, you can build this thing for about 200 bucks. If you want it what I call tricked out, it'll be about $250. I think for the extra 50 bucks, you can easily make that up in profit. After all, if you can get anything close to what the competition is getting out of these things, you will be set. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed that video. I hope that you can take something away from that and add to it. Again, the awesome thing about these and what's going to make these sellers is that you can customize these in so many different ways. From these little corner protectors that are dirt cheap, the handles that you choose, the little warming tray, I think that's what it's called, with the top on it towel rack. There's just a ton of different things that you can do. And just like we showed you during the video and at the beginning, it can go all the way down to what type of siding that you want to use on this. You can use metal, you can use wood, you can use pallet wood, you can use whatever that you would like. Get creative. That is the main part and that is how you're going to sell these things. I hope that you are able to take something away from this video. I hope that you're able to build these either for yourself or for your woodworking business and sell the heck out of them. So again, thanks guys so much for watching. Make sure to smash that subscribe button for more. Plenty more where this came from. Hopefully next time I will actually have my voice. So until next time guys, go out there. I want you to challenge yourself. This build seems like it's a little bit larger than some of our other ones, but it's just larger pieces. So do not be intimidated by the size of this. So I want you to go out there push yourself make something a little bit larger make something a little bit more out of your comfort zone so till next time guys see ya